Welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. We are both retired New York City police detectives with 20 plus years of law enforcement. And guys and girls, if you like all things true crime related from a police perspective with some really cool guests, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you'll get all things Duty Ron when I go live or upload another video. Tonight, Ed and I have a really special guest. I reached out to her personally because I felt that she really deserved and needed to be highlighted on YouTube. YouTube is the community that Gabby Petito was starting out with, with her channel, Nomadic Static. She, um, I know I just screwed up the channel name, but she had the one video out there. She was going to be going full-time uh, van life on YouTube. So I thought it was important that the YouTube community got a chance to see uh, Tess Parker. She is a mural uh, um, artist. She draws murals for people in having health issues or um, anxiety. She does such great stuff. I'm going to let her come on and tell you all about it. But for the folks who are joining, I want to just say a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. I freaking love you guys, the channel members the subscribers, the people who positively interact with me and Ed, you guys are an invaluable addition and need, much needed because without you, we have nothing, right, Ed? We need right. our community. So Ed and I, we tip our caps, even though he doesn't have a cap on. Uh, I got my cap tipped to all of you folks, all in the country, outside the country, Scotland, Australia. We have everybody. And, and coincidentally, tomorrow night, our guest, Ian, our bug doctor, is from Aussie. He's an Australian. So he's going to be joining us tomorrow night. We, we'll talk about that at the end, but let me show you a little piece from Tess Parker. She is a sweetheart. Guys, I don't have a daughter, but if I had one, I'd want her to be like Tess Parker. She is freaking awesome. So let me show you a little bit of a piece of some of the work that she's done. Um, this is a memorial mural lifelike huge bigger than life on the side of a building so many things came together on this this is a feel-good story and i think when we talk about gabby petito and brian laundry it it tugs at our hearts right it makes us all you know we're, we're our emotions are all over the place and we're so so um ripped apart uh so to speak with this it, you know a good feel story like this i think is much needed so let me add this to the stream so you guys can see it. It's a small little piece. And when we finish with this, I'm going to introduce Tess uh, and have her come on. She'll tell you all about herself. But here it is, guys. It's just a small piece from News 12. A well, Long Island artist is using her talent to paint a mural of Gabby Petito in her Blue Point hometown. News 12's Danielle Campbell and photojournalist Dave Garden show us how her work is keeping Gabby's spirit alive. My name is Tess Parker. I'm a muralist, artist, painter. I just wanted to like really reach out to the family and do what I could to help. For me, this is therapeutic, helping people, making art, and that's just how I knew how to help. And this is really the only way I know how. This is a huge community project. This is from the community to the Petito family. I walked into the law office here. She was like, my wall is yours, go for it. A team of masons, they ripped all these stones out and replaced it with stucco. Brinkman's Hardware, they donated materials. People have been bringing me food. La Mia's, a local restaurant, offered to feed me the whole time. I'm just so touched. Everyone's just been so sweet. You can't miss it heading westbound. She's going to be in like a field of sunflowers. There's going to be butterflies flying all around her. Uh, lots of color. Yeah, they usually take about a week. 
kind of like feel her spirit with me a little bit, you know, this, this guidance. There really are no words about losing Gabby in this entire experience, but if, if something can come from it, I'm just hoping that other people get the help that is out there. We're, we're thinking of them, we're here for them, and that Gabby will be remembered. A beautiful tribute to Gabby. And Parker expects to have that mural completed by early next week. If you'd like to see it, it's located just east of Nichols Ro Road in a shopping center on Montauk Highway. What a great, what a great uh, piece right there. That is feel good. I mean, I get the chills when I see it. Um, you know, I, I really just have such a great vibe about this. Um, I'm from Long Island. This is I'm a Long Island boy. I was born and raised here. This is um, my community. My parents live out in Suffolk County. So it gives me great honor to introduce our guest, um, artist extraordinaire Tess Parker, checking in from East Islip. Tess, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. It's, it's my pleasure. You know, uh, when I look at this piece, you know, it, I was done like a month or so ago. Um, it just, it brings great joy and pride to my heart because I'm a father, you know, I have children your age, uh, they're grown adults now, but, um, you know, for me, I see so many local do something like this. It just makes me really proud. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your background? Give the audience, there's like 300 and something people watching, just give them a little bit of background on your, um, what you do. Okay, sure. Um, I am an artist, painter, and muralist, but I'm actually also a licensed creative arts therapist and board certified. Uh, so with that, I've worked with um, in inpatient rehabs, inpatient psychiatric units, and within the mental health community. And that's kind of how I had gotten my start within murals, at least. And um, yeah, that's kind of how it, how it started, always a painter. And then I found this other kind of avenue to go about it where I can do both uh, also while helping people at the same time. And you're 30 years young. Um, talk a little bit about some of your projects prior to the Gabby Petito. Like what were some of your uh, standouts that you've done? You know, I know I've seen some stuff at hospitals. You talk a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, my my first one is probably my pride and joy. I call it my baby. That uh, I had done a comfort room in an inpatient psychiatric unit that I was working in on Long Island out in the East End. And um, it's called the comfort room, but it was all white walls. And I was like, well, this is the opposite of a comfort room. Uh, it's where you would meet with the psychiatrists like upon admission and uh, and with the nurses, which I imagine is an incredibly overwhelming feeling for someone who's being put into an inpatient unit. Right. And so I said, you know, we really need to actually make this a comfort room. And so I started a business proposal to the um, hospital. I kind of went up the chain of command and I said, hey, can you fund this, fund the materials and get me coverage and I'll paint the room. And um it came out like really great. I loved it. And it, with that, I started to realize how I can utilize my knowledge and skills as uh, not only just an artist, but as a creative arts therapist when creating things like that, because there's so much that the average um, artist or muralist wouldn't take into account with those specific populations. Uh, for one example, I often use this, like when painting a bird, if you're in an inpatient psychiatric unit, you want to make sure that bird isn't flying towards the viewer because you never really know what kind of state of mind they might be in a heightened state of mind where something like that can come off as, um, as uh, threatening or induce paranoia. So you just have to be very careful about placement, um, colors, hues, all of that stuff really needs to be taken into account. And, um, I was able to kind of do that. I had um, learned that skill from a mentor of mine, Stephanie Condra, and I kind of just went with it once I was on my own and spread my little baby art therapist wings. I I just began doing that. And then I started, I'd done a bunch in that hospital. And then from there, I began doing private homes, um, sensory rooms for children with autism, um, Med medline hallways, uh, places where patients wait um, to receive hopefully good news. 
Right. Uh, really just anxiety provoking areas. And I make sure to use um, research from the American Art Therapy Association with uh, symbolism, imagery, colors, all of that. It's fantastic. And I saw some of your outdoor stuff in people's backyards where you paint like a white vinyl fence and yeah. <laughs> vinyl fence is looking like somewhere out in the middle of like some tropics and stuff like that. So it's really, really awesome what you do. Um, I wanted to ask you too, um, you're 30 years young, right? Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what brought you to this Gabby Petito? I know the connection. You talked to me on the phone about it. It, it, it involved a significant other. Talk about Blue Point, Long Island, and what it means to you. Okay. Um, I would love to. I have a, a very close, I call them my family. Uh, my first love, his name was William Scatino, and uh, he was killed on the LIE, uh, mm -hmm. the Long Island Expressway, for those of you who don't know your Long Island lingo. <laughs> and um, he, he was killed by a cop who claimed sun glare. Uh, it was all over the papers. Uh, his family and I and his loved ones never saw justice for it. Uh, we tried getting him a skate park in town in his honor, and everything just kept kind of falling through. And every time we thought we might see justice or we might get some sort of comfort in the healing process, it just didn't happen. And then the years went by, the years went by, and there was no longer media coverage. And um, his family wasn't receiving the support that they initially were. And so with that, I, I, I always held a, a soft spot in my heart for him and for his family. Um, we were together for years and years, and I still stay very closely in touch with his family. And he's from Blue Point. I'm from East Islip, which is about 10 minutes west of there. Uh, but I spent a majority of my teenage and college years in, in Bayport, Blue Point. So I'm probably more, <laughs> more a part of that community than my own. <laughs> I want to just say um, my sincere condolences to your boyfriend and his family. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know that part of it. You just kind of you put put that on me now. And like for me, I you know, my heart breaks for a situation like that. And there's no winners uh, behind that uh, when you can't get any justice for the family. And, you know, it's just frustrating all around, um, you know, and as a career a law enforcement professional, you know, you see and you hear about things like this and you just wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy on both sides of this, you know, because uh, anytime someone takes somebody else's life, there's lifelong consequences and you got to live with that. So it is horrible, but it brings us into the way you um, uh, approach uh, everyday life stuff. So you hear about this Gabby Petito case, and what brings you to the point of contacting and how does that all happen? Because folks want to know. And Nicole uh, Schmidt gives her blessing to this live stream and is probably watching. So hi, Nicole. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, and the Gabby Petito Foundation, we're looking forward to supporting that wholeheartedly. I know that Tess and myself and Ed and the whole entire Crime Time with Duty Ron community will support you and your family going forward we want to continue to support you we made already over a thousand dollars in donations from this channel to the gabby petito foundation so i'm proud to be a sponsor of that uh, i'll continue to sponsor it and i'll continue to do fundraising or anything that i can do but bring the audience uh, tie it all in how does uh, tess parker reach out how does that all go down and just give us how it how it happened and what got you to that point well, initially, if I um, felt I had this connection to her in that she's a young woman from the same community as I am. So there's kind of the this close to home feeling. Right. Um, and with that, at the same time, that murals are my bread and butter. It's what I do. And how I even started out as an artist was painting people's dogs, painting people's children for them. Um, like if I had a, a friend in, in high school who had a, a parent that passed away or a dog that they lost anything, I would make sure like, oh, I'm gonna paint them for them and, and give it to them. And that kind of just became a, a thing that I did. And so this case affected me as it has the world at this point and uh, even at that point. And so I say, you know, I've done murals all over. How could I, how could I not think of this? I am like the, local muralist for the South Shore of Long Island. 
Yeah. So I said, well, how I, I felt like it, how could I not? It kind of came to me like o- almost immediately. And um, because of my connections to Bayport Blue Point uh, in the town, having um, having had such a good relationship with Billy Scatino and his family, uh, they're mutual friends of Nicole's and her family. And so I had reached out to his aunt and I had said, you know, by any chance, you know, the, how I could get her information. And I'd sent a message to them um, online as well. I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Joe Petito's Instagram and just let him know like who I was and um, what it is that I do and that I wanted to offer my services. And I said, if it, it could be anything from, a mural to a a painting, whatever it is to kind of help them navigate their grief in this like tremendously, there aren't even words for it, but this scenario, this unfortunate scenario. So you wanted to do whatever you could within your power of art uh, to try to help them um, memorialize their daughter, if you will. But at that time, I'm sure they were being uh, flooded with emails and, and, and messages from people from all over the world. Uh, and, you know, it, it, I, I myself sent messages to them because I am the EquiSearch Midwest law enforcement liaison. So what we do is we search for missing. So when Gabby was still missing technically in uh, Wyoming, I reached out to uh, Jim, I reached out to Nicole, I reached out to Joe. Those are the people who I knew how to get a hold of. Um, the only one that really re- reached right back out to me, and it was his first day in Wyoming, was Jimmy. And he reached out to me, and he was, you know, because of the Brotherhood of the Fire Department, the Police Department, he reached out to me and he said, um, Ron, we don't need you right now, but we may need you. So he put me on standby, um, and I was ready to go at any time with drone pilots. And so we had communication, and it was a great thing. Um, but you know, when you sent messages to them, I'm sure that there was hundreds of other people like me messaging them. So I think it is just like a, is a, like a divine intervention that they were able to get right back to you. And Nicole described you as an angel to me. She was like, she's so sweet. She called you a sweetheart. <laughs> so, um, and I have the message right here on my phone. She sent it to me tonight. Uh, when I told her we were doing a live stream, I invited her to come on and she was, um, You know, she said because of her, you know, constraints through her attorney, she was not able to do it. But um, she said in the near future, she would be happy to come on. And when that happens, I'd like to invite you to come back so we can have you on and we could all talk about it. Um, So now you reach out and who gets back to you first? Nicole. And what's that conversation like? Um, It was it was emotional and 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 beautiful in that she had responded immediately. Like, I love this idea. I'm all for it. And so then step one for that was me to come up with an idea in my head and to think, okay, well, like, how do we want this to look? And I, since I didn't know Gabby personally at all, we had never met. um, I really wanted to capture the essence of her in it. And so it was very important for me to get to know her a little bit more outside of her YouTube channels and her social media and more like through her family. It was important for me that it this was for them um, and not like, you know, for, you know, not that it's not for the world to, right. to look at and to think of, you know, domestic violence awareness and to think of Gabby and all of the emotions that it evokes within that. But it, I felt it really to be for them. And so um, I wanted their, the photo to be their choice, um, different aspects about it, and make sure that it's something where they looked at it and it was, and it was sentimental. Right. And, and I think you really hammered that point home with the, with the final, um, you know, the final production. How long did it take you to, um, from beginning to end, do this? But we are skipping over an important part. Before you answer that, mm-hmm. how did you get approval and how did you get the location? How did that all go down? This, I think, is the most beautiful thing um, about, like, like the most beautiful thing about the mural was the community coming together so much for the Petito Schmidt family. Um, I couldn't get over this. I, I was on Long Island one morning. Um, And I was driving around the area and I said, you know, I was talking to, I was texting back and forth with Nicole um, about Gabby and 
talking about her and and I said, you know, let me just drive up and down Main Street and start scouting for walls, like what might be a, a good wall, a good area. And so we were brainstorming that and I'm just driving around looking and I saw the um, the one that I ended up doing the mural on. And it was like this perfect clear view. Like if you're heading westbound, you just can't miss it because there's this giant, like the road curves and there's this giant parking lot. So it's just wide open right to this wall. So I was like, man, now would be really great to have it there. And it would be in Blue Point. I mean, Bayport, Blue Point are two of the same, but I knew she was from Blue Point. So I felt even just kind of having that nod within that specific Hamlet would be nice. Um, so I went in, uh, I was walking around in the parking lot, like trying to find um, like a for rent part of it where there might be a number to the landlord. Cause I'm like, how am I gonna find this building owner? So I, uh, this woman comes out of the law office in there and she's like, can I help you? And I told her who I was and why I was there. And she said, well, my uh, my boss is actually the building owner and she's in a meeting right now, but she'll be out in just a moment if you wanna wait. And so I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll sit in here. And about a minute later, she this wonderful woman, her name is Pat Blair. She came out and she goes, Tess Parker. She's like, I knew it had to be you. So <laughs> I guess she, she's familiar with my work and we're both from East Islip. So it kind of was like this small world thing. And, and she said, oh, you can, you can have my wall, it's all yours. And I was like, this is great. But it had, um, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a type of very textured stone stone that jug, like, like just uh, juds outward where it would be like impossible to paint with brush. Is this and the I picture thought, right like, here of the building that we're showing right there on the screen? Yep. Yes. As you can see that like very rigid, like brick yeah. sort of thing. And the the divots in it are very deep. So I was like, well, I would only be able to do it with spray paint unless I can find a way to flatten this wall. So I said, well, I'll, I'll reach out to the community. So I took a photo, like a small photo of what the wall looked like. And I put it on my personal Facebook and said, does anyone know um, anything about masonry? What can I do to fill in the gaps here to try and flatten it? Um, and I told them what I had planned to do within it took less than an hour and i had to choose <laughs> i did choose between uh, masonry and construction companies because there were so many people saying like i'll i'll take care of it um and this one guy he wished to remain anonymous we had a really beautiful conversation and i was like this is the he's here for all the right reasons and and i was like this is this is great so i i went with him and he had a team there, they ripped out that stone and then came back the next day and replaced it with stucco. And then it took three, four days to dry. So by by next week, I was able to start painting. Who is this girl that's leaning down there with the paintbrush uh, in a pair of pink uh, uh, sweatpants uh, with paint on the back of her shirt? Who is that girl? Who In the photo right there? Is that you? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I knew it was you. I was just being funny. Oh, I was like, huh? If I, if I, if I sat like that, Tess, I would need probably a wheelchair to get me up on a bunch of people. <laughs> oh, my God. You're on a scaffold doing that beautiful um, mural. Uh, took you, what, nine days, you told me? Yeah, it was just under. It was within a two-week period, but there was like three days I was like upstate for a wedding, and I wasn't I when I wasn't around, but... Mm. If you think that's difficult to paint on, you should have seen I had done this private home bathroom once where they had like this 16 foot ceiling that starts out like super wide and then it comes up to a skylight. They had me on this ridiculous scaffolding and then a ladder on top of it. And, <laughs> and so this this was nothing. <laughs> Ed, what we would do to be young again, right, Ed? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The the knees the knees aren't working that well anymore. No. I, I was being funny when I said who's that girl sitting? I knew it was her, but I'm just uh, I'm just saying, wow, cans and cans of different color paint, a big bucket with brushes in it, the heat, the sun. Like I saw at one point, one day she was wearing like a, a shirt with no sleeves. And I was like, I hope she's got sunscreen on. Like I'm thinking like a father now. <laughs> um, 
And I'm so pale, I need it. So <laughs> I forgot it one day. And so I'd actually called Billy's mom and I was like, can you please bring me sunblock? I'm gonna burn if you don't. But I had like, that was another thing with the community. Like people were bringing me coffee, uh, flowers. I had people bring me mugs. I had domestic mm -hmm. violence survivors from all over New York. I had a woman come from Cape Cod to wow. drive there and to, and to watch me paint. And they would just hang out with me while I paint. Um, there were people who would sit in the King Cullen lot and just watch and like, I don't mind, I'm used to it. I've done public art for, for a while and it doesn't really bother me to be like watched while I'm painting. Right. But uh, it was funny, they'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, it's cool. You can hang out here all you want. <laughs> Let me just uh, stop for a minute so uh, a lot of new people are joining. Um, uh, just so everybody knows, this is uh, Tess Parker. She is the artist who uh, drew the mural for Gabby Petito and her family in Blue Point, Long Island, uh, in October sometime. We don't have the exact dates because I didn't do my homework 100%, but it was sometime in October. So don't don't come at me for that. But uh, we, we both were kind of busy uh, for the... Last, I've been speaking to her for about a week, so I, I, we don't have the exact dates, but it was sometime in October, and it took her about nine days. So Tess Parker has her own uh, website. I'm going to just highlight that website really quick, uh, uh, if you don't mind, if I could put that on the screen. Is that okay with you, Tess? Yeah, absolutely. All right, good. So this is her website. Um, it is a Therapeutic Murals, um, and it's um, this has got all of her work on here. Uh, look at this stately woman. She looks like um, uh, beautiful. What a beautiful photo. Um, all of her work is on here. And I, I clicked on it before. And if you go to this photo gallery, um, I'm just going to click on a couple of these. And would you just tell me, like, this is obviously Oakdale, Long Island, right? Um, where was this? Just uh, Gourmet Deli. It looks like a, this is like a parking lot. And who's the, uh, who's the mascot who's always in the pictures? That is, yes, that is my Shiba Inu. Her name is Okami. I was going to have her here with me. I usually, br I bring her with me to on site to ev everywhere. Really? She's my little baby, but she, um, I was afraid she'd start barking and ruining the sound for us. Oh, she you could, it, but I was like, that would be my luck. So I have, I have her with my dad right now. Aww. Well, she, she would have been welcome, is sound or no sound. Right. No. I'm going to look at a couple more of these. Here's inside of, uh looks like a doctor's office of some sort. Is that that, that is actually the comfort room. That's the first mural I've ever done. Wow. Beautiful. Is that bathroom you were talking about in here? Yes. Oh, okay. Because uh, right away, the Sistine Chapel comes into my mind when I see, hear you on a scaffolding, scaffolding <laughs> rather, painting on your back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That was the previous one was actually part of the bathroom. It's it's hard to tell because I tried to make the corners disappear. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. I see but, the vent. There's the vent yeah. on the ceiling for uh -huh. humidity and moisture and uh -huh. stinky stuff. So there it is. Uh, what a beautiful mural there. Um, oh, back to Gabby's. We, mm -hmm. There was a, a lot of butterflies and different things in there. What was some of the significance to that? I know butterflies signifies... Uh, are, are passed on loved ones miss, uh, coming to visit. Um, what On the wings, there was a bunch of different things. Do uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, I'd love to actually. Um, the the monarch butterflies in, in the um, mural of Gabby were because she had loved them. And then when I had given her her own wings, because as a muralist, I didn't, it's from the photo of her standing in front of the wings. And, and I believe it's, I know it's in Colorado. I just forget which area of Colorado, but I didn't want to copy another muralist's artwork, even though it's like, yeah. So I said, well, I'll make, I'll make my own wings. And um, as I'm talking to Nicole more and more, I was like, well, she had sent me, I'd learned that Gabby herself was an incredible artist and she did like really amazing line work. And um, mandala work, Zen tangles, and her her designs were just like really, really interesting and geometric and spaced out so well. And um, that's something like I admire myself as an artist because I'm like this very like sloppy painter. And one of my nicknames is like Messy Tessie because <laughs> I don't have that like 
very strict way of um of creating art and so it was it it was really i i just admired her work very much and she had done these i believe it was it was etching i i could be wrong but she had done a um where she had painted onto or etched onto her guitar a bunch of different designs and her mom had sent me photos of her artwork and so i incorporated um gabby's artwork into the feathers of the wings so um some of the feathers have designs of of gabby's own making within them beautiful now this is uh the picture i have up here there's another young lady uh here with you is that like an assistant or someone helping you for the day or is that a volunteer um that's actually she's kind of all of those at the same time that's hampton zager her, uh, her mother is actually the one who put me in touch with Nicole, and she is also the cousin of Billy Scatino, who, um, mm. who I'd mentioned earlier was like my high school, college sweetheart from, from, that, from that town, that area. So right. she helped me out a bunch. So now we have, um, we have the finished product that I'll show in a little bit, but this is as it was a work in progress. So on these uh on the angel wings here is where the little butterflies and the little things you added into personal touches right yep yeah and then there's a few there's a field of sunflowers at the bottom i think all of the like progress most of the progress photos they just look like brown polka dots at the bottom yeah <laughs> see there yep yep and, and then you were kind enough to put work in progress which was that was adorable <laughs> i love that so this way when people come look at it they're like you don't want it to be like oh what what is this? Yeah. 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 Yep. That's awesome. But I, I can't say enough good uh, things about you. And I mean, like, the, you know, my channel is about true crime and talking about, you know, crime victims and their families. But I also do domestic violence awareness. Um, I'm big on suicide prevention. So I do things like that. And um, I, I felt um, collaborating and connecting with you. Uh, even though you might have been like, oh, who's this old dude trying to contact me? But um, I felt collaborating with you is important because it really ties in a lot of things that we do. Um, and, you know, I think that in the future when we do stuff, we can bring you in and you could give your perspective from an artistic side to helping people who suffer from PTSD, anxiety, and all the things that you specialize in and because you're, you're really helping a lot of people. Ed, you got any questions for her? Sure. I was just looking at the the paint. So you're using what exterior um, uh, paint that you bought at the uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that? Yes. Yeah. I am. Um, I use usually always like a Benjamin Moore exterior paint. Mm -hmm. um, I had gotten. I I had a bunch like left over. I guess that are just part of my materials. And then I, so I went through and thought about like, well, which other ones would I need? Because I was like, I can't, I, I couldn't afford to go out and fund all the materials for the project. So mm. one of the first things I did, I'm actually glad you asked this because I forgot to mention that uh, True Value Hardware in Bayport Blue Point, I stopped in and I asked them, I told them what I was planning on doing. And I asked them if they would fund the materials and they gave me like, everything that I needed. They gave me like, it was something like seven or eight different courts, um, a gallon, and then the Sherwin Williams and Patchwog donated the anti-graffiti coating. So it's like a polyurethane coating that you put on that's like a clear coat. To protect then, it, yeah. Yep, exactly, it protects right. it. If if anyone does graffiti it or if anything does happen to it, it's it's like weather resistant, UV resistant, um, keeps it from chipping, fading, and if paint or anything else gets on it, it can be rubbed right off. Or and did they mix custom colors for you, or did you just uh, buy off the shelf colors? Oh, uh, they mix custom for me. Look at that. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. great. Yeah. Right, so I we got to support. We got to support these you. businesses. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So what was you the know, name? You, you True Value where? True Value um, in Bayport Blue Point on Montauk Highway. All right. You hear that, folks? Shout you got to go out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, shout out to True Value. Um, and, and all the restaurants and the people who are bringing food and things of that nature to her. Um, I want to show a little piece from Banfield. I'm not going to show the whole thing because this goes into talking with Brian Enton about the case, but... 
Um, this date is October 15th. So it gives us a pretty good idea of when she was doing her stuff. So uh, let's say probably mid October is when uh, this whole project really came to fruition. Uh, would that be a, a fair guess? Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Let's take a peek at this piece. I'm not going to play it all because once they start talking about the case, I'm going to stop it. But here we go. I suck at technology, by the way. <laughs> all right, here we go. Because I can't get enough of highlighting you. I have to do this. <laughs> We are in Blue Point on the side of the law office building here. Uh, Patricia Blair has graciously donated her building. Um, that's kind of how this all started was I uh, I had spoken with the Schmidt and Petito family. And um, so before I got the ball rolling, I obviously wanted to make sure it was something they were on board with and what it's something that they'd want. So I let them know I'm a There's local a muralist thing. here in the South Shore of Long Island. I grew up in East Islip, lived in Oakdale for years, and have many, many friends in the community here at Bayport Blue Point. Uh, the family had chosen the quote, she touched the world. Um, that's kind of been something that they've, they've been saying for a few weeks now in her honor. These are going to be two uh, different views of Earth, two different vantage points of Earth. Um, and then in the feathers, I'm going to incorporate aspects of Gabby's own artwork into it. I'm going to um, copy it from images and uh, do my best to do it justice. I'm a very, like, kind of messy painter, and she did these incredible line work, like Zentangle and Mandala work. So we'll see if I can, uh, <laughs> if I can mimic it. I'll try my best, Gabby. <laughs> And um, then there's going to be sunflowers. Uh, there's going to be butterflies. Yeah, I'm just going to make it from that image. When I heard about the case, I began following it. Um, I had friends tell me about it because it's it's local around here. Um, it's something I would have known about regardless. And I think it's just something that's so tragic and something that could have been prevented had it been handled a little bit better in Wyoming or Utah rather and maybe even in Wyoming too because there's so much we don't know there really is so much that we don't know um, and a large part of that is because she was taken from us let me say that that was um, a powerful statement and I played it for a reason uh, Tess I couldn't agree with you more at that time, and I still couldn't agree with you more even at this time because there's so many unanswered uh, questions and we may never get the answers to them. But that being said, things like what you did and random cac acts of kindness like what we're doing here and what countless other nameless, faceless people behind the scenes, the people who brought you food and drinks and supported you at that shop, right? And, and people that just came by and just gave the thumbs up and beat the horn. Those are the things that make us say humanity is still in play. Uh, and, and it reinforces the good. With all the crap and the bad in this world, you have things that go on like this that turns us around, so to speak. You know, And that's why I felt so strongly to contact you because i felt it was my way of saying thanks to you by using my channel and my uh social media platform to highlight the good that you did um so you know i thought that that clip really did um sum it up uh really well and you ended it by talking about um some really important port the sticking points in this case and um you know uh, again uh, it was powerful um, and also great because everything that you talked to us about here, you, you talked about there. So um, your voices um, and your your art your artistic gift is really powerful. So um, I can't thank you enough for that. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, and I, if you don't mind, I would like to go to my chat because there's over six hundred and something people here all for you they're not here for me and ed uh definitely not us no they're not here for us <laughs> so if you if you don't mind i would just like to just pick some of the questions from the chat if anybody has any questions and i'm going to even offer anyone if they want to call in uh and come in as a guest and ask uh tess any kind of questions related strictly to her 
uh, her artistic work. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share in the chat uh, a link, and if you want to come up and say hello, uh, we would really be uh, honored and happy to have you. So let's do that. Let me copy that to clipboard, paste it, and then I'll look for some comments. I'm only gonna have two or three people come up because Tess doesn't have all night, um, but but she's uh, she's been kind enough to come and hang out with us for 40 minutes. So let's see what we got for you in the chat. Um, I muted you, Mike. Uh, hold on, I muted you for a second, so I didn't hear you. Go ahead, say it. I said thank you. It's my honor and pleasure, truly. <laughs> yeah, the the folks at Crime Time with Duty Ron, like I said, I have some of the best supportive subscribers and friends. They're, they're tremendous people, and they're from all over the world. Let me know where you're watching, city, state, or country, so we can also say hello to you as well. Um, so let me just see what I, we got here. Ed, I got a. Yeah, I got a question, Tess. One of our um, guests asked, if you travel to do work, do you go to other locations? Do people contact you and you travel to other locations to do your murals? Uh, I haven't yet. I've only been a like licensed sole proprietor muralist for a little less than two years now. So I've really only been getting work in New York State but I'd be more than willing to travel and to do art. That's that's the that's the ultimate goal here is to really just continue and cr keep creating art. And especially if it can be something that has like an impactful message um, to it. And it, it can be sort of kind of underlying or not underlying, but more like activism rather than just aesthetics. Our good friend, Steve sent a message in the chat. He said, does she have a fundraiser page? Uh, none that I know of, but any super chats or any kind of revenue that comes on this live stream, I'm going to be redonating them to Jess, to her, um, to her, um, her work that she does. So anything that comes in here, super chat wise, I'll add it up at the end, and I will be sending it to her. Uh, so I'm going to pay forward any type of donations that come into DutyRon.com or here on the live chat. So that's what we're going to do tonight for her. All right, oh, I'm going to show you, oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to show you some of the places where folks are checking in from. There's uh, California, Southern Cal, beautiful. Um, I saw the island of Guam checking in. Thank oh, you. For joining. Hello from Savannah, Georgia. Thank Don't you. eat the beetle nuts. Don't eat the beetle nuts. <laughs> Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Love Canada. Uh, Maddie Sully just reminded me it's to the 249th birthday of the U.S. Marines. Hoorah! Hoorah! Uh, my yes. folks, yeah, my, my folks in the military, um, thank you for all you do. You keep us safe and you make freedom. Uh, freedom doesn't come free, but they, they, they uh, definitely keep us free and safe. So thank you for that. Hit Hello. the phone, Ron. Hit the phone. Say again? Oh, the phone. the phone. Oh, okay. I got to call Ed. Hold on. This is this is for you, Matt. This is my other ringtone. Here we go. All right, I'm calling now. Uh, thank you, Jan on the lam. Simplify, Matt, and happy birthday. Awesome. We got Tess dancing in the background. All right, the super chats are coming in. Uh, thank you for the $30 super chat from Jan on the Lamb. She sends it in and says, Your talent has touched the world just as Gabby did. Thank you so much for that. Let me find that so I can highlight it so, so Tess can read it on the screen. So there's that message with the $30 super chat. Thank you for that donation. All the donations and super chats that are coming in will be going to Tess. Um, here's another one coming in. Where is it? Ooh, somebody from Yorkshire, the UK, uh, chiming in and Alabama, Kentucky, Maine, East Texas. All right, let me get to the next super chat. And I want to just say thank you to the folks sending in donations. You guys are awesome. Uh, Jamie Johnson says, thank you, Tess. $5 super chat. Thank you for that. Um, let's see who else is here. Uh, Donna. Donna sends in a $20 super chat. She says, fantastic. Such a beautiful and means so much near Ontario, new, near Ottawa, Ontario. Keep on keeping on. Tess. I love these messages. Me too. 
Beautiful. Jennifer, Jennifer sends in a $20 super chat from one artist to another. Bless you, Tess. Oh. Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much. I wasn't expecting this at all. <laughs> oh, my God. Black Rose 11 from Southern California says, Tess Parker, love for another brush stroke for beautiful angels. Aww. Thank you, Black Rose. And she's a great All right. Writer. From a Navy vet, from someone who suffers from PTSD, your artwork is comforting. You're very talented. $25 super chat. Beautiful. Thank you. Aww. Lauren Sparks sends in $15 and says, thank you, Tess. Much love <laughs> to you. Lots of hearts. Uh, here's a question for you, Tess, from Beth. Mm -hmm. What are the two or three most soothing or calming colors for anxiety? I would say probably um, cool colors and light hues. So if you want just one color and not a mural and you want it to be a relaxing space, I would go with like a light earthy green um, or a light sky type of blue. Awesome. Thank you for that. And now we're full screen with you. So you are it. Everybody's just looking at you. Dawn Marie is from Long Island, but living down in Florida. She sends in a $10 oh, super chat. She says, rock on. Yes. Long, Long Island. <laughs> Here's another super chat from PB and J. We love a good PB and J. Uh, yeah. New York. I hope I get to see it in person someday. Thank you and God bless. Tess, tell everybody exactly where that is. Uh, it is at if you put the address nine Main Street Blue Point in, it will it will come up. But if you pull into that lot, it you won't really be able to see it unless you walk around. So your best bet, like to get the best view for it, is to uh, go to the King Cullen in Blue Point on, on Main Street, which is Montauk Highway. And then you can't miss it once you're in that lot. I'll link right in the chat here, uh, in not in the chat, I'll link in the description the exact address and that instruction. Creative, uh, Creative J says, at Duty Ron and Tess, how long will the mural last for before it has to be redone? That's a good question. That is a good question. That's where I have my fingers crossed uh, because it all depends on the sun, the weather, uh, the elements, um, how it's treated, hopefully respectfully, because it's not going to last as long. If it is graffitied and it does have to be taken off, it's not the best for the coating. Uh, but it should last, at, I'm hoping, without any issues at all, uh, at least 10 years. Oh, wow. But um, I'd be more than happy and willing to come fix it up at any point, too. And if you ever have to do that, I'll be your security detail. All right. All right. <laughs> Nancy Eileen is a good friend and a channel member. She says, does uh, Tess do tattoos? I think that's a different license. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. I actually, I was asked this today by someone. I've been working on the Bohemia town sign in Bohemia. And um, someone was like very impressed by it and pulled over and asked me. And they were like, do you do tattoos? I want you to do a tattoo of mine. And I was like... I don't. I haven't. I haven't tried it yet. But I would. I would love an apprenticeship. Like that would be cool to learn it. But I'm right. more of a painter. All right. I'm gonna try to finish up with these questions, and then I'm gonna put actually the link for anybody that wants to join and ask you a question in person. So we'll okay. take just two of those if you don't mind, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Joyce Smith sends in another ten dollars and says, Aww. "Tess, you're a beautiful soul." I got a question. Um, I just posted up here. Um, from uh, Loretta. Okay. Are there specific colors used for artistic persons? Um, it depends because with autism, it's such a, an individualized diagnosis. There are never two the same. Um, I mean, that goes for every type of mental health or developmental uh, diagnosis. But with, with autism, everyone is so different. So what could trigger or be a precursor for one is very different for the others. So that's where if it's with autism specifically, I'd like to meet the person and um, have a discussion with them and a meeting with them first, especially if I'm like designing a, a room for them, for them to be calming. I like to learn about their own individual needs and interests. Um, but there's no like theories about what specific color might be helpful for autism. Unfortunately, we know very little. Um, there's not really as much research towards autism 
as, as there should be, but it's, it's gaining. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for that. And um, Matt Scully, who's a, 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 he's a Marine, once a Marine, always a Marine. His dad was a retired New York City police captain. He's no longer with us. So may your dad continue to rest in peace. He sends $50 in. And oh, says, wow. She says, you're a beautiful soul. God bless. Um, for those of you who are joining late, Tess Parker is a uh, artist. She drew the mural for Gabby Petito in Blue Point, Long Island. She has her own website, which I will link down below. I think everybody should go over and send some support or love to uh, Tess Parker for nine plus days she spent out in the elements drawing um, and painting, not drawing, painting this beautiful piece of artwork. Uh, and I will link the actual location and I'm gonna go live on the scene uh, not live on a video, but I'm going to be on the scene live doing and taking some pictures and videos in the near, near future. And I will bring that to you in an upload. And maybe Tess can meet me there one day and we can do an on scene hangout. Um, and, you know, if you guys want to come by, you can always come by and say hello. Joy Smith, thank you for that super chat. That's $10. Another super chat came in from Jacker's Girl for $5. Hey, Ron. Yep. Robin asked if, uh, if, Tess has a um, PayPal, Venmo, or anything like that. They can donate directly to her. Do you have it? I do. Yeah, I have a um, I have a Venmo. I will link it down below in the description. Um, okay. If you want to text it to me now, I will put it in. Um, I'll put it in now into the live chat, and we'll see. Right. You know, Chantel sends a ten dollars super chat, and she says, "Thank you, Tess." Originally from Wading River. Oh wow! Okay, another Long Islander. Yes. Uh, Janelle uh, Keen says, love you, Tess. Great work. Bring her back at Booty Run. I would love to be back again. I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you had fun here so far. I uh, did. I now, did. I am. Tess, Tess, if anyone vandalizes your um, murals, you got to contact me immediately. I'll come out there and I'll work it up and find who, who did this. All right. Good. Ed is, a, Ed is a forensic specialist. He worked oh, in the really? crime scene. He worked yeah. in the crime scene. All right, peanut butter and jelly sends in a twenty dollars super chat. This is for you. All of these funds are going to go to you, Tess. You are beautiful and talented, uh, kindred spirit, Tess. Hashtag Gabby Petito. Touch the world is so true. I really hope her impact continues to change the world so this never happens again. God bless you all. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what, what a bunch of loving, supporting people. And, and, and these folks are just, uh, just pouring it out. Um, tons of messages, uh, coming from Josh in the private chat. He said tons of messages in the live chat, giving love to test, tell chat to comment for replay viewers. Yes. We got to say thank you to the replay viewers because some of the folks don't catch us live because they're outside of the country. So I want to just take this moment to say thank you to my replay viewers outside of America. And for those of you who are in America and you're missing the live and you come back and leave comments down below, not just for me or Ed, leave them for, te uh, for Tess. Let her know how much you appreciate what she's done. Let her know what you think. Uh, and we're always open to constructive criticism. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to always be um, a, a bunch of really, you know, loving messages. If you have some criticism or if you think things could have been done differently, you let us know. As long as it's done respectful, I'm open to anything. I'm open to anything. But I don't think there'll be too much of that. Um, so, Peanut Butter and Jelly, thank you so much for the generosity. I put the link in. Does anybody want to call in and say hello to Tess? I mean, here's an opportunity. I'm posting it again. So a, lot people, a lot of people are camera shy. <laughs> yeah. I did want to say too that if um if anyone wants to see it completed, um I have it, I I have yet to update my my website and put the finished piece of it on, but I have a uh, my in on my Instagram. There's um progress photos and the finished photo on my Instagram. Are you going are you going to have an unveiling? Um where like a like like invite people and have like this whole thing to it. You mean? Yeah. I mean, do, did you ever do that before for any of your murals where, you know, you kept it covered and then you unveiled it uh, in a um, ceremony, ceremony like? I, I, I did, but um, one of them I was actually unable to, to make. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it sounds so unprofessional, <laughs> but um, I had done, I had done one for the Girl Scouts 
there was this incredible Girl Scout, Danica, who had gotten her basement redone for the church that they have their Girl Scout meetings in. And so she had gotten over $20,000 worth of labor done in this place, like new lights, new floors, everything. And so she had called me up and asked if I would do a mural down there. So I was like, how can I say no to a Girl Scout? So, okay, there you go. so that was like a formal unveiling um, of within the like unveiling of the basement. But um, I didn't, I was at the uh, uh, suicide prevention walk that Sunday and wasn't able to make it. I was in Manhattan. Very good. Okay. One of our guests, Rose, asked um, if you know any colors that are good for chronic pain. Oh, that that is a really good question. Um, I wouldn't say that there's colors specific to chronic pain, but I'm trying to think off the top of my head about like what images, like if you were to get a mural um, for physical pain. I always, uh, you know what? I will say this as an art therapist, with chronic pain, one of the best things that you can do is to work through it with clay. If you like any art making, that is a huge thing for like any um, neurodegenerative disorders or anything that's with chronic pain, get clay. Uh, but as far as with colors and enhancing your aesthetics to help with it, I don't think there's at least that I, I'm not saying that there isn't, but I don't know of any theories that are backed and valid and reliable about something that like that's specific for it. Thank you for that honest answer. Um, I, I don't like people that give answers to questions just to answer them. And that right. was as honest as you could give. So uh, Jeffrey Weber, thank you for the $20 super chat. I greatly appreciate it. Tess appreciates it. Ed appreciates it. Catherine Elizabeth Gasparino, $5 super chat. God bless. Oh, wow. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I, just went over, I just went over to your Instagram and believe it or not, I'm not following you. Um, and now I just requested it. It's a private, is, is it a private account? Elephants can paint. Is oh, that that's my, that's like my, my, like I have a, my art one and then like my, my personal one, but you can request either. Yeah. I requested that one, but where can okay. I see the progress? I want to show the progression. It's a, it's therapeutic murals. That's the name of my, uh, of my company is therapeutic murals. That's on Instagram. Yes. Yep. Hey, wait a minute. I better be following this one. I am. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a many people don't realize this discipline because I, I know a few therapists that do this. Um, I have therapists in the prisons trying to rehabilitate prisoners using therapeutic art uh, techniques, um, and then also at risk youth, uh, same thing. Um, working with the children there, getting them to uh, develop art. Uh, some of them are watercolor paints. Others are. Um, uh, mosaics in tile. Um, it's really quite, quite uh, interesting work that these people do and quite beneficial. Look at how adorable she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Where can I find the, um, the progress ones? Um, of the Gabby down. Oh, this one. Yep. There you go. All right. See, this old man's not that bad. All right. I'm going to start right here. And this is a close up of the let it be right. Yep. I'll let you narrate this. I'm going to go full screen. Um, I actually, I want to just, uh, I want it just to be her and this on there. How can I do that? Because if I remove me and you, Ed, then she won't hear us anymore. Ah, shit. What about right, this? I'm, I'm going to go full screen. What about this? Don't touch. You're going to disconnect us, Ed. Oh. <laughs> I'm only kidding. All right. I'm going full screen. You tell us what we're looking at. So this is the let it be, right? Yep. And then that is, that is like the bottom portion of where um, her wings on her left side are. And it has her, um, that is the portion where it has her tattoos on them. And this is, I recognize this from uh, the family. They all got this little symbol right down here on the right. Uh, right. This little, little like kind of like swirl. What is that? Um, it's a wave. Okay. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> like an ocean wave. <laughs> He's like, Ron, get with it. It's a wave, dude. <laughs> uh, 
And then this is beautiful, the rose with the, um, the nice, just a nice. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's move to the next one. Gabby designed that one, actually. She did. She yep. did. yep, beautiful. Um, here we go to the next one. And there you are. Give us a little uh, background on what you draw in there. Um, that is me adding the finishing touches. That was like the last, one of the last days I was there where I was actually work, working on the painting itself and not putting the polyurethane on it. Um, when I was, the last step was adding Gabby's artwork into the aspects of the wings. And my, my cousin and my aunt came to visit me that day. And my cousin had taken that, the photos of me finishing up that, that portion of it. And so that's why I was like, oh, I, you know, I, I liked that that one and that that photo of it because I felt like it was like me doing the the very personal nods, right, to Gabby, and to her picture. as an artist, and then also me kind of completing it in that moment as well. Yeah, it's just beautiful. And take notice that there is a, a, a an illuminated heart on that one. I've already taken the liberty to heart that one, so. Um, I don't know if anybody can tell that, but on Instagram, if your heart is something that's going to be, it's going to be like this. When it's not hearted, it's not red, but it was already hearted. Um, that's duty, Ron. That's what I do. I do stuff like that. <laughs> My wife says that when you heart too many, it's creepy. Don't do it. That's <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, I hearted this one too, uh, but this is, can't be creepy because it's for Gabby. Uh, this is the finished product. No. Yes. Yep. I got to go full. I got to get that as big as possible so everybody can see it. Um, talk a little bit about the feeling when you got uh, when you were completed with this. How did you feel inside? How what was um, what was going through your head? You know, it's it's been so hard for me to answer that question because it's been a common one. Like people have been asking me about, like, you know, how does it feel to be like doing this? And it's the, it's, I don't even want there. It's so hard to find words for because it's, I don't even want to say that it's bittersweet because there are like, there are good things to it in that seeing the community come together in this way. And like you were saying, it's almost like a restoration of faith and humanity in a way. Um, but it's over something just so devastatingly tragic that should have just never really happened to begin with. Right. And it's just such a mix of emotions that it's so hard to place. And that every time I try to find a word for an emotion, I end up just rambling. <laughs> so, I understand. Kind of just, I, I didn't mean to be redundant with those. I didn't no, not that, at all. Not at all. I didn't know that anybody actually asked you that, to be honest with you. But it just, I just, I know that me personally, if I was there uh, or if I was doing it, uh, I would be very emotional. And um, again, you, you put your heart and soul into this and so many, you know, women hours put into the thinking and planning. And you probably maybe just like my wife, her, my father-in-law, God rest his soul was a inker for Marvel comics. So my wife is got the art artistic touch. When I, my kids were growing up, I would come home from work and there would be Barney and baby Bob painted on the walls in my kids' bedrooms. <laughs> so my my wife would always say, uh, I think I could have did better. Um, she was very oh. critical about her stuff. Uh, you know, like yeah. she drew a life-size topiary once on the wall. And I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, and I was showing all my friends and she was like, don't show that to anybody. It's not mm -hmm. perfect. And I thought it was. Uh, but this looks perfect to me. Like, Thank you. Unbelievable. Yeah. When I, when I was in college, uh, uh, I used to have to go out to uh, city streets and do landscapes and, and buildings. And, and I would sit there with newsprint and watermarkers and, and I would draw the buildings that I was looking at. And some people would come up to me and I actually made a few bucks. Uh, people bought my, uh, my stuff. And meanwhile, it was a class project. Yeah. That's awesome. But my wife would never let me do that on a wall in her house. <laughs> there's only one way to find out <laughs> oh, I, I, i'm i'd rather not ask forgiveness <laughs> <laughs> let me go back quickly to the chat because there's so many people chatting it up over 600 people constantly just sending messages and i don't want to um i don't want to ignore our live chatters because they've been very generous and kind to uh you tess so 
Um, here's some here's some of the comments. Let's go back to all of us together, like a happy family. Stunning how you made it with her personal ink that she had on her arm. How beautiful. Yeah, I mean, those are personalized touches that uh, Tess, I'm sure, thought of. And did you collaborate with her mom on that, or did you just do it? And she she gave you the full blessing, and you just did it. Um, it it was a I'd say it was a collaboration. Um, I honestly don't remember if it was her or I that thought of putting her artwork on it, but I know we were talking about her being a, a talented artist and that she had such a passion for it. And I didn't even know this until I was talking to Nicole about it. And um, so then I was like, oh, please send me, send me pictures. I want to see her artwork. And it kind of um, developed, I guess, throughout us talking. Wow. Beautiful. Um, I just want to check my Twitter really quick because um, this is where I've been communicating and Facebook with Gabby's mom. Let me just check Facebook real quick before we wrap. question for you too is, uh, did you ever do a mural that you liked um, you didn't like, but the people you did it for loved. Um, I don't think I have, honestly. Like, I usually will, like, keep going, even if it takes me twice as long until I'm happy with it. Because for me, my art is representative of me and of my work and of my passion for it. So I, I don't think I'd be able to, like, part with something and call it my own if I didn't feel myself within it. Mm -hmm. Good. It was, I was just asking for uh, one of our guests here in the audience. Um, I understand that thoroughly. Here's a, here's a message from Gabby Petito's mom from Nicole. Okay. And she sent this to me just a little bit before we went live. So this isn't while the show is live, but she said, thank you, Ron and Tess. Uh, and your community. We are limited in what we are doing um, with interviews right now due to, for obvious reasons. Um, she said, over the next couple of weeks, I will promise to come and do a live video with you. You are, and your people are such amazing supporters. And I personally thank you from the bottom of my heart. So that's coming straight from Gabby Petito's mom, Nicole. And thank you for that beautiful message, Nicole. We look forward to you coming on to Crime Time with Duty Ron and um, blessing us with um, with your presence. Um, and there's so many people here who just have so much love and respect for your family. And we send you nothing but peace, prayers, and positive vibes daily. So um, you know, thank you for that message, Nicole. Um, we just, we just, I'm just so proud of how strong this family has, uh, what they've shown to the world. Um, when we were at the memorial service in Northport, I was shocked at how beautiful they were together. You know, um, these are four co-parenting situations. Sometimes that doesn't go well. Sometimes it's ugly. Uh, and those people make it everything but that. So, um, I, I mean, just to meet them in person, shake their hands, hug them. I just got such a great vibe from them. And um, again, these are these are strong class acts. These are class acts. Uh, all four of them, uh, just amazing. Um, it looks like the questions have dried up. Everyone's just sending you love, um, Tess. I'm gonna have to buy you a pair of headphones. That's gonna be my next thing. <laughs> When you come back, so, you don't have to hear the, so it's going to be my gift. You got to give me a home address. Um, I will send it by Amazon straight to your porch. A pair of wireless earbuds. What are you, Apple girl, or are you Android? Um, I, I mean, I have an, I have an iPhone. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm an Apple gal, and I'm on a Mac, so that makes sense. And I guess I'm an Apple person. And you're <laughs> lucky because I work for Amazon, so. Oh, I'm hooking you up, girlfriend. Oh, okay. thank you. That's so awesome. I I lost my AirPods like two weeks ago. Someone had bought them for me, and I'm like, the, I don't have many like nice things, and I'm like so messy and and always like. I'm gonna send you some Apple. I'm gonna send you some Apple Air, AirPods, but don't don't tell me if you lose them because I don't want to know. I about won't. Them. I promise I won't. <laughs> Any, for, any any final parting words? There's over 600 people still here watching you live. Anything for the audience? Um, 
All I can say is that if you think that you are not good at art and that's what keeps you from creating, to not believe that inner voice and art is more about the process than it is the product. I know so many people will say to me, well, I'm not a good artist. And that's because we have this societal pressure about how if it's not photorealism, then it's not good art. But if you actually look at you know, fine arts and historically what it is that is um, the best art and the stuff that really sticks with us over time, it's that people were creative and inventive and did something new. And so I, I encourage all of you to, to find that creativity within yourselves and to use that for for inner healing or outer healing i think it's the it's one of the best medicines is, is to create what a beautiful message Tess, you there? Yeah. Yep, I'm there. I'm here. Ron, Ron, what's going on? Ron, you're frozen. Ron? Okay. I don't know, <laughs> folks. Something happened to Ron. Uh, <laughs> Josh, you know what's happening here? All right. Okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll just keep going. I don't know what happened to Ron. He'll he'll bounce back in. He'll he'll go out and come back in, folks. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I saw I, um, I saw someone had asked a question about if the family chose the sunflowers. Yes. Um, the answer is is yes. The family did choose that. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's great. Um, I love sunflowers myself. I remember being in Urbana, Illinois, and just traveling down the highway, and there was just fields and fields of sunflowers being grown there by uh, the people for sale. It was great. Um, Anything else uh, do you have? Any other works that you're working on right now and any new murals? Yeah, I'm actually right now I'm working on for any of you guys who are familiar with Long Island. If anyone knows of uh, the town Bohemia, I'm working on their town sign similar to the Oakdale one on my website. Uh, just a little different. It's a much bigger wall. It's my biggest piece I've done. So physically exhausting, but it's it's a good time. Okay. When is that going to be done? I'm hoping the middle of next week. Hopefully in time before it gets too cold for me yeah. to be out there painting. Yeah, I imagine the cold and the winter weather kind of puts a damper on yeah. your business. Eh? Yeah, it definitely does. I have like only indoor stuff. So I'm really hoping to branch out to like more consistently warmer areas where like in the winters I can go to like Florida or California or somewhere out West where it's like warmer to do pieces, but we'll see that's end goals. <laughs> He's back. What happened, Ron? You're back. My whole computer restarted. <laughs> oh, by, did, by itself? It restarted by itself. That's yeah. Mine did that the other episode oh. we did. So if that would have happened with. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> Mr. Murphy is visiting Ron today. Mur <laughs> Murphy's Law. He's, he's frozen. No, I'm, ba I'm back. I'm okay. Back. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, before the internet gods shut me down, I want to just get to the point of what I was trying to do here. Um, looking to wrap it up. So, as I like to do, I like to go around and around Rob and, and just give some final thoughts. Tess already did hers. Ed, you got anything for the troops for tomorrow night? What do we got going on? All right. Tomorrow's the big night for entomology. That's right. I'm going to get my nerd on, as you people like to say. I'm going to have my forensic entomolo entomologist from down under come on uh, in, and we're going to talk all things bugs and crime scene related. So if you suffer from any type of um, PTSD or if you don't like uh, to hear about the little gory stuff when it comes to forensic artistry, um that might be one that you might not want to tune into but if you're into that then come on because we're going to talk to a forensic entomologist a bug doctor 
and he's going to give us everything uh, science knows and everything about science. So if you guys are into that, it's going to be bug night tomorrow night. I encourage you guys to tune in. I know Tess will pass on that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> she loves us, but she's passing on that one. Um, I want to go full screen with me because I got an important message. Guys, I just want you to just remind you that we are here about all about crime victims and their families. We support them. We respect them. Everything that is done on this channel is done with dignity and respect towards the families because we as detectives have had to make those notifications to family members who have lost loved ones. It is not something to joke around with, and that's why we treat all of these cases with the utmost of respect. Um, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for leaving comments down below, for subscribing to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and for leaving positive messages, not just for the for us, the co-host, myself, but for my guests. My guests are what make this um, community go forward and really bring you guys into the next level of uh, looking and insight into these cases. And Tess is no uh, slouch. We, when we're covering Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry case, this is all part of this case. And it's an important part, just as important as what the police do, and just as important what the parents do. So I feel that it's a, 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 an unbelievable opportunity for us to all come together and see all aspects of this, uh, this criminal case. And as I like to end all of these live streams, God bless the world, God bless the United States of America, and God bless each and every one of us here in the chat, and all victims of crime and their families across the globe, not just here in the United States, but across the globe. And I want to say thank you to everyone who joined in, who sent Super Chats, who supports this community. You guys are freaking awesome. So on behalf of Ed and myself and Tess Parker, we wish you guys a good night. Tess, don't go anywhere because when we're done, I just want to chat with you for a minute. Okay, cool. We're going to take us into the outro. See you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. I'm going to schedule a live stream. Bug night tomorrow. Be there or be square. Peace from New York.